Hi, artist friends. Today we are going to be painting these beautiful little uh, freesias. I had a lot of them in my yard and I think I even had them on my art desk um, maybe a week or so ago and we got a ton of rain and I came out one morning and the poor little things were literally drowned and had flopped over and uh, were laying on my table outside. So luckily I'd painted a few of them um, because I'm so sad they are waterlogged and gone now. So we're going to be painting this little flower today. It's fairly simple. It consists of these C strokes and the fine lines. So you can always go back to my uh, tutorial of warm-up practices before you begin to paint every day just to kind of remind your hand of that muscle memory and pressure. And uh, once you get really good at that and practicing every day, you'll go to paint something like this and you'll already feel like, ah, I know, I know how to do that. So um, let's go ahead and get started. And today I'm going to first go through our color palette. Uh, my freesias were this color and also white. So I'm gonna go ahead with this color because it shows up a little better. And lucky me, it's my favorite color, which is that Quinn Magenta. Um, so we're going to be using that color again today. And I've just got that in my palette here. I've got enough water that it kind of looks like that tea consistency. And I make these little kits for you that I'm so glad. Uh, you know, I create one per tutorial and you guys have been purchasing those. I'd love to hear back if they're helping. Um, I always say, you know, at the end of my classes in college, I would always go up to the front and just literally stare at my professor's paintings that she'd went through during class so I could kind of study her um, brush strokes and things like that. So I'm hoping when you purchase these, they, um, you know, having them in front of you, it will really help. So we're going to be, you could have them in front of you, go back and watch the tutorial and see my brush strokes. I, I actually give you the original, my little color swatch with the colors um, on them and a page of just the brush strokes used in that particular tutorial. So I hope those are showing up and helpful for you. So today again, we're going to use this beautiful Quinn Magenta, and then I'm still waiting. I need to go get this more of this Cad Yellow. Um, I'm about out. So here is that Cad Yellow. We'll probably have a little bit of a blend of that, um, which creates that really pretty orangey color. And then we're going to use my two greens which are olive and sap. So there you go. The sap green is more, I think, of a kind of brighter green. I like the olive green because it feels um, a little bit more earthy and organic to me. It has a little bit deeper hue in it. And then of course I love this green gold I've been using. Just, you know, if I need to go into some areas and add a little darkness. These are all Winsor Newton. And today I'm using my Princeton number no. eight Velvet Touch Round. And I try to put these, link these all in my description for you in case you want any of these. You guys are asking me a lot about these little sheets I use. They're, you know, basically from Artisto. I buy them in packs of three. They're very reasonable, but I found they really do well with the paints, uh, which I'm kind of surprised. So um, I, I link those because you guys have asked for those so much. So here are the colors that we'll be using. I might 
add a tiny bit of my cad orange we'll see sometimes i add that in with the pink it can be pretty as well as the cad yellow so there's the swatch that would come with your little kit and i name all the paints for you and then the brush strokes that we will be using today will be and you get this sheet as well um are going to be these thin lines and so so important um, I can't stress enough how important it is to practice these brush strokes because the more you get familiar with how they feel um, you develop that just automatic muscle memory in your hand when you go to paint something like this you're going to notice you don't feel that frustration. It's like you sit down to paint something and <laughs> and I've had this as well. You know, people say, here I am looking at a blank piece of paper and I don't know what to do with it. It's overwhelming. So the more you practice these brush strokes, you're going to sit down and say, oh, I know where to start. I can start with this beautiful, long, thin brush stroke. Um, and, and it's not so overwhelming, you get this confidence. So to create these light brush strokes, you're going to be holding your paintbrush, and I hold about right here, so I have a little bit of control. The farther back on your paintbrush, you're gonna have a little bit more freedom and kind of, um, you know, more movement. So for these strokes, I want to be a little more precise, so I'm holding it farther down here. And my water and paint is just damp, not dripping. It's not completely full. And I'm just using a light pressure with the tip. So just lightly pressing and moving my palm across the sheet like this, okay? So just practice that very light touch. And you get this sheet, by the way, and I name the brush strokes for you. So you can practice these, come back to this tutorial and try again. And I think you'll do really well. I'm hearing you guys really feeling good about the paintings that you're creating. So the next brush stroke is going to be these little leaves and some of these. Now these are wet into wet. So I first went down with these green kind of stems and leaves and then went into it, as you'll see, um, with wet and wet and just let that blend. So some of these little leaves, I'm just dabbing like so, okay? I'm just dabbing them on here so you can practice that. Just dabbing them and these brushes that's why we really want to protect the integrity of our tips because they're so important in watercolors if you have a nice tip and you've protected it and taken care of it meaning you're not setting it in your water and leaving it with the brush down after you are done painting you're rinsing it really well and kind of going like this I don't want to touch it because I have paint on there and creating that point and then just setting it down to dry. I use these a lot. They, they're made for paintbrushes, but they always remind me of um, like a chopstick holder, I suppose. And it takes that pressure off. You never want to store your paintbrushes with the bottom down and the bristles up because what happens is the water settles down into this area and it can really ruin your brushes. I've seen the water, if I leave my brush in water, uh, it ruins this beautiful handle. So just take care of those little points, they're your friend. And then the other stroke we're going to be using for the petals are these C strokes, compound strokes, where we're going with the tip of our brush right here, and then we gently apply pressure and then release again. So we get these compound strokes, which is just a stroke that involves both a thin stroke, pressing down, lifting up and pulling. So we have this beautiful 
rounded C stroke. And really basically in uh, watercolors, that's pretty much the stroke I use predominantly. So now here I've also got a different value, which means I have more paint here and more water here. And what it does is it gives that depth effect and it also creates interest in your paintings. So for these flowers, we need a left and a right. So here is the left, press, lift up, and then we're going to be coming in with the right. Press, lift up, and it creates this either a leaf or a little floral. We're going to be adding into the middle. We'll just be creating more of these like that, okay? And we'll even touch in while this is wet and just let it spread a little. So practice these brush strokes, point, press, practice them over and over. I know what I mostly hear from you all is the challenge of creating these petals and they turn into a blob. Usually if they're turning into a kind of a blob, it means you have too much water on your brush. So when I dip into my water before dipping into the paint, I always just lightly scrape off some of that water. Then when I go into my paints, as you can see, this is pretty watery. I don't want my bristles real fat and round. I wanna just gently scrape off some. So you never wanna go in with a puddle of water. Okay, so point, press, point like that. Point, press like that so we just have these beautiful sheens so practice those until you feel really confident with the amount of water remember when you're putting paint and and a layer on your paper you just want it to shine and be able to move it around easily but no puddling we just want that beautiful shine that's the perfect amount of water if you're getting some puddles and pulling that's when you're gonna come up with kind of a blob. So practice that, just point, press, point, press, point, like that. I have my students, when I teach in person, practice long pages of these. Just point, press, lift, pull, point, press, just practice that over and over, okay? So you get used to that feeling of the pressure. So with that, I think the leaves, we might use this type of brush stroke. Let me show you, which would be something, um, you know, I might add in some of these where I'm just, creating that pretty little leaf. But for the most part, these leaves, I'm going to create buds as well because what I noticed on uh, my freesias is on that beautiful stem that comes out, it's got these fun little buds. And I just use the tip of my brush to create those. And then I go in, I rinse my brush scrape it lightly to get that excess water and then I go in and if you think you have too much on your brush just dab it on your paper towel and it gets rid of that extra water and then go in while this is wet and let it blend just like that and you get this fun look okay so that's what we'll be doing um, I will label all of these and you can practice them if you have this kit or come back to the, even this tutorial and just practice this, okay? So you kind of get that feel. This compound stroke, which all a compound stroke is, a combination of a thin line, light pressure, and I write all this on this um, sheet that you get with the kit, and then pressing in to get that wider. You're pressing in and widening out the barrel of the brush, okay? Pressing in, widening out, lifting, pressing. Just 
you could do a whole sheet on those. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on our painting. I'm gonna turn my page. I'm trying to get in as close as I can. Um, give me one second. I'm just gonna raise my camera a little bit so we can get the whole sheet in here. So let's start with this beautiful kind of a candy cane type of um, stem that mine have had that I just, I think that's so unusual and beautiful. So I'm going to go into my green here and just add a little bit more water because see that's a little thick. So I'm gonna add a little bit more water to get that really liquidy tea type feel. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in that stem. So here we go. And then down like this, okay? And then I'm gonna go in and just pressing. I, I always refer to it as little dabs. So I'm just gonna create different size ones. Maybe this one is coming up here. And then another one right here. So while this is wet, I want to pick up some of that magenta, Quinn magenta color, and I want to go into it. Now I, I want, oh, it's pretty good. It's like tea. And I'm going to go into this while it's wet and just create these little buds, different sizes. Now this one, I'm going to use two C strokes on each side like so, maybe this one too, like that. So I've created these wonderful little petals. I might create some in the background here, something like that. Now, I may wanna go into this one with a little bit more green, so I'll wash my brush, tap it on my paper towel, and pick up some more of that green and just touch in because I really want, I, I like getting that bleed, okay? Like that. Now I'm also going to add a couple of these little things here, like that, and then I'll go in with some more of the Quinn Magenta. I'm trying to add these as these are wet so that I get these beautiful bleeds. Now, the last one I had on my bush had one larger bud coming out. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in right here. So I'm gonna go into my purple, my Quinn Magenta, and I'm going to do left and right C strokes. Remember these C strokes we practice, left and right, creating something like this. So let's just go in there, create one, two, three, like this, maybe one coming out here. Now I might go in with a little bit more value, meaning more paint to water, and just kind of touch in here and there. Let that kind of bleed and spread like so, okay? So you have this beautiful flower coming out here on the side. Now, just for interest, I love to blend in the, going back to my swatches, some of these colors I think is so pretty with this. And I did notice mine had some of that color. So I'm just gonna mix up some of that cad orange maybe a little cad yellow, and just tap into some of these and watch how pretty. I just think it's such a pretty touch. Like that, okay, there we go. So now what I think I wanna do is just add in a few more leaves here. Now, to be honest, I cannot remember the leaves. A lot of times I Google these, but it, I didn't this time. So I'm just gonna kind of 
That's the wonderful thing about these, though. You can just, you know, make this your own. Make your things look like how you want them to look. So there you go. Um, I might now, I added in a lighter value there, and I might want to do this a little to create some different values. So what to do that, I might just lighten a couple of these up by rinsing my brush, jabbing it on the paper towel. So now it's somewhat dry, and then I might just go in and lift part of that. Dab again, maybe lift a little, just like that. And look at how that creates some real depth and interest. I think over here, these feel to me like they're all the same color. So I'm gonna go in with a little lighter version of that pink, little more watery, and I'm gonna go in and maybe add another one right here. That kind of looks like it's in the background maybe. Something like that. So now there's a lot more interest here. Maybe even add in a leaf here. Let's go in and add in a little bit of green to these, like that. And then let's add in a real washy green here, okay? So there is a really light wash of that green. And what it did is it really gave it depth. It put it in the background. I'm gonna do one more of those. So I'm putting a little bit of water in with my green, a lighter value, and let's just create one more right here, like that. So I'm getting all this push and pull with this. Um, you know, I really could have gone lighter on maybe this one. Let's see if we can lighten that up, which you typically can't do. Now, one way to do that might be just blotting it with a paper towel. See there? So that kind of lifted a little bit. And it creates this beautiful look of interest because you're adding in some white space and some of that depth. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. I think these flowers are so fun and they're so pretty. And maybe going in and using, you know, some of this blotting, it really creates some interest. I might even blot this a tiny bit, maybe just an area. So it gives you this movement in your painting. And I, hope you can follow along with this. We basically used uh, compound strokes here for a thick, thin, thick. So light pressure, pushing in, using the barrel of the brush and lifting up. These were all the thin lines. And, you know, really doing an entire page of these. These little green pieces coming out were just these little dabs with the tip of my brush and then the C strokes for the flowers here. So I hope that was fun and um, I hope that you know this this is something that you'll enjoy and I think you'll be able to recreate and I will list all my supplies in the description in case you're curious. This was 140 pound cold press and it was a piece of the Artisto paper, which I buy in three packs. And it's pretty reasonable, but I find it to be, it, it works really well with the watercolors. I'm kind of surprised. And then play with dabbing the paper towel into some areas to lift some paint and create some highlights and dimension, okay? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and sign this. Um, let's see, Freesia tutorial, and I'll just sign my name right here. And I hope you have fun with this. Thank you so much for being here with me. I can't tell you how much I'm enjoying all of your um, comments and shares. It's so wonderful. 
go into my warm-ups video and it's only 15 minutes and do that daily and especially before you paint I think it'll really help okay everybody thank you so much we'll see you soon